For the fire of God is in this house, hallelujah. The fire of righteousness is in this house, hallelujah. The fire of repentance is in this house, hallelujah. For the Lord said, you see wickedness all around you, hallelujah. But I'm using the anointing of this house, hallelujah, to shape generations, my God. I'm using the anointing in this house, hallelujah, to shape generations, hallelujah, to shape culture, hallelujah. There's revival fire, hallelujah, that's in this house. Why? Come on, lift your hands. Lift your voice. Uh, receive the fire to shift, to break, uh, to mold. Uh, he's doing new. Elder BJ, can you can you stand with Pastor? Hallelujah, Pastor Tate. 
Can we all just lift our hands, hallelujah, and point our hands towards our pastor right now, hallelujah. Come on, the reason everything is shifting, we see praise and worship is even shifting, hallelujah. Because there's an anointing in this house for righteousness, hallelujah. Every time I walk in here, I feel like repenting, hallelujah. I feel the fire. God, if there's something new, hallelujah. Oh, God. If there's something that I didn't do right yesterday, God, on this morning, God, make me new. And that that anointing rests on pastor, hallelujah. Oh, I hear the Lord saying that revival fire is in this house. Hallelujah. Not revival that we've seen in the past, self-made revivals. But the Lord said it's natural, it's organic, it's coming out of this house. Hallelujah. And it's going to go on for generations. Hallelujah. It's going to go on for generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even though you see evil rising in the world. Hallelujah. The Father said that righteousness is seeping out of this place. And everywhere you step, hallelujah, you leave trends of righteousness everywhere you go. Because what's in this house, everywhere you go, the scent of righteousness dwells with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The aroma of righteousness is going with you. Hallelujah. Don't worry about what you didn't do right. Because the anointing of righteousness rests in this house. And when you come up under the covering of Pastor, hallelujah. When you come up under the covenant of this house, righteousness goes with you. Hallelujah. You can't help it. You can't help it. It's a grace in this house. I got my conduit it up. So Father, be hallelujah. We lift up the man of God in this house. I ain't got it else, yeah. For his surrender. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift up the man of God. Let's lift him up in prayer right now. We lift up his hands. Hallelujah. For there's a mighty anointing. There's a mighty, mighty call. There's a mighty commission that's on him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a mighty commission that's on him. Hallelujah. To uplift righteousness. Hallelujah. Everywhere we go, when our kids walk into school righteousness goes hallelujah when we walk into our jobs righteousness goes hallelujah when we walk on the airplane righteousness comes with us when we walk into other countries righteousness goes with us and it's coming out of here so if there I am I need a heavy surrender I need a heavy surrender I need a heavy surrender lift your hands throw your hands up and say yes Lord I'm coming under the covenant of righteousness. I'm coming under the covenant of righteousness. Repentance is mine. I bow down before you. I bow down before you. I let everything else go. And I say yes. 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 Come on, that's all we want to hear is the yes. That's all he wants to hear is your yes. That's all he wants to hear is your yes. Tell the Lord yes. Lord, we say yes. Come on, worship him right here. Lord, we say yes. He said, I'm not even, I don't worry about what you did yesterday. Uh, hallelujah. Your yes, hallelujah. Cancel out everything. Hallelujah. I keep no record of wrong. Hallelujah. For my love is genuine towards you, my daughter. My son, my, my love towards you is pure. Yes. <laughs> Can we go old school? Yes. Yes. Come on, we about to move. Yes. Yes. I oh, got Yes. Uncle Wayne, I remember to say, Yes, Lord. If anything got confused, Yes, Lord. 
on, just say, yes, Lord. They don't know who you're talking about. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Have your way. Lord, have your way. I grew up in the old school church, storefront church. The saints, the mothers used to get up. We used to have testimony service. And you would either have a testimony or you start off with a song. And I remember the, the mothers used to say, sing the song, yes. My soul says yes. Yes. Yes, my Lord, my soul says yes. Come on. Yes. Come on, somebody say yes. 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 Yes, my Lord, my soul says yes. Does anybody have a yes, yes in their spirit? Yes, yes. Come on, in the morning, in the morning, yes. Yes. Yes, yes. yes my Lord, in the morning, yes. yes. Come on, yes. does anybody have a come on, yes. my soul, my soul. My soul says yes. Come on, can we go old yes. school? Can we simplify? Yes, it's just yes. In the evening, in the evening, yes, 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 my Lord, in the evening, yes, 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 my Lord, in the evening, yes, 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 come on, last time, yes, yes. How many yes, trust God? Does anybody trust God in here? Yes, if you trust him, just say yes. yes. We don't really know all what it means, but somebody say yes. 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 Yes, yes. yes my Lord. Yes. 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 Come on, put your hands together. Give God a praise in this house. Come on, give him a praise. Come on, he's going to do mighty things, but can I have somebody that can give God praise for what he's already done? Can somebody thank God for what he's already done in your life? You didn't bring yourself to this place. God had his hand on you. Somebody ought to praise God. Come on, don't forget. Hallelujah. Don't forget when you were down. Hallelujah. Don't forget when you were blind. Don't forget when you thought about taking your own life. Somebody praise God in this house. Hey. Woo. Don't forget when you remembered, when you remember that time you didn't think you was going to make it. I need somebody to praise God in this house. I need some people to stop caring about who's looking at you and think about your God, how mighty your God has been. He kept you. You didn't keep yourself. You didn't even want to be kept. But God kept you. Hi. Praise, I gotta let it out. I need somebody who got a praise in their heart. Praise, I, I gotta praise. 
I got to praise and I got to Jason Wells. Hey, this is an old school Sunday, man. You came on the right one. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, go, go, go join somebody and tell them you're coming out so that you can go in. Come on, go, go agree with somebody.
Murderer. Father, how many understand it is in the presence of God 
It is the fullness of joy. It is in the presence of God where our lives change. It is in the presence of God where your weaknesses die. It is in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise your holy name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Does he know presence? Your presence, God. The scripture says, in the presence of God. The scripture says, wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. I don't care what change you walked in here with. The Bible says, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Oh, Jesus. So just lift your hands. Surrender to liberty. Freedom. Your presence, God. Your presence. Hallelujah. Your glory, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hand and surrender to victory. Surrender to liberty. Your presence, your essence. Your glory. Oh, God. The glory of the Lord is in this place. Come on, one more time. Your presence. Your presence. Your essence. Your glory. Your essence. Your glory. Your presence, Lord. How many know his presence heals thee? How many know his presence heals you? It shields you, it heals you. Oh, God. It shields me. It's his presence that shields you. It covers, it covers me. How many know you're free now? Somebody say, now nah, I am free. Come on. Now, now I am free. In your presence. In your presence. Come on, let's repeat this part. Where I want to be. be. Come on, in this presence, lift your hand and say, Lord, it's in your presence where I want to be. It's where I want. How many want to be in his presence? See, we a lot of us don't read the Old Testament. We don't know how much it costs to be in the presence of God. But now we can be freely in his presence. It's where I want to be. Hey! Come on. Liberty. Come on. It's where I want to be. It's where I want to be. Hey! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. Your presence is where I want to be, Father. It's where I want. Where 
last time. Yours is where I want to be. Is where I want. Some of the things that we take for granted is God's presence, the power of our praise, the power of our prayers, the last shut-in we had, it was just a small handful of us here. spent a lot of time over the years in prayer and interceding. Mm. So I know when God is doing a unique thing in, in, a, in power of prayer and we were praying and I was praying I was laying on my face and I began to cry. I began to cry and I began to push everything under the unction of the Holy Spirit. I was pushing every ounce of cry that I had in me. And I was telling Pastor Tate I said I can only count on both my hands how many times I have cried like that in, interce in interceding. I was, that was an interceding cry. I said, that cry saves lives. It's a life-saving, interceding cry. And it was about our youth. Am I right, Carmen? I was crying out for our youth. Saw the enemy attacking, trying to take them. And I cried with everything in me. And y'all don't even know how just since then, it was just weeks after that, God saved our youth. Where the enemy had it already planned to take them out. And God covered them. You know why? Because James 5 and 16 says, the prayer of the righteous avails. See, that's a war word. We don't even know that. That's not a nice word. That's a warring word. When you look at that word avail, it means you prevail against the enemy. You prevail against the enemy's attack. How many, how many knows John 10, 10, the scripture says the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So when the saints are praying, and I asked, there was just a couple of us, I said, we need to cry out. We need to cry for our youth. And it was such a proxy prayer. Mm. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. This morning I was singing, I was singing an old hymn. I was singing an old hymn this morning. I was in the kitchen. I was, clean, I was cleaning up my kitchen and I started praying in the, in the spirit. And then I heard this song just pop up and it was hold to his hand. <clears throat> God's unchanging hand. And it's, 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 it's amazing how the Holy Spirit works. When I heard Elder Wayne just praying in the spirit, the scriptures teaches us in 1 Corinthians 14 that in the corporate service, someone speaking in an unknown tongue, it says pray for interpretation. Well, I have the gift of interpretation, so I don't have to pray for it because I already got it. And you know what he just said in the spirit? He said, hold to his hand. I don't know what you're going through. All you need to do is hold on. Hallelujah. Hold on. Hold on, Debo. Hold on, Lish. Hold on, Jacob. Hold on, Sinead. Hold on, Lakeisha. Hold on. Hold on. We don't have to.
have to know everything. You just got to know whose hand you holding on to. Ah, yeah, yeah. Hold on. Hold on. Hold to God's hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. God is trying to, God is doing something. Y'all know I'm supposed to be preaching by now. The Holy Ghost is doing something. That's a breaking right there. My God. Deliverance is in the room. Healing is in the room. Ah, yes. Somebody to just throw your hands up and just repent. Somebody to just throw their hands up and repent. The devil can't have you. Old stuff trying to keep creep back. Old relationships trying to creep back. Into bondage, playing with bondage. Somebody just throw your hands and I'm going to let you know the devil can't have you. Because God already got you. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. In spite of your sin. In spite of your rebellion. The Lord got you. He got you today. Oh, yes. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is your heart ready? Raise your hand if your heart is ready for seed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Pass me. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Your best is being created. Mm. Your best is being created. The best for you is being created. You haven't seen it yet. Yes. Hallelujah. I hope your heart is ready for God's word. Just be mindful of what God is already doing. It's going to be happening through this whole service. There's, it's just in the room. It's a new quarter. I said, I, I've been having so much anticipation about this second quarter. The second quarter of this year. Real quick, Mama Gwen. We're going to have announcements really quickly. And then we're going to go into the word. I do want to share the word. I've been, I've been praying all week for our hearts to be open and ready for the seed of the word of God. And that God's seed doesn't fall on stony ground, but ground that's ready to receive. So amen. Say amen and Mama Gwen brings the announcements.
Good morning. We're going to have a, a busy month with SWAT, and we want to invite you to come as SWAT go out and pray. This Saturday, we will be here at the church from 9 to 10. Uh, April the 20th, we will be at Camp Wonder Academy from 9 to 10. So we invite everyone to come and join Elder Wayne and the SWAT team, amen, as we go out and begin to pray. So please meet us here promptly Saturday at 9 o'clock. Also on April the 27th, we will be having a clothing giveaway from 9 to 1. So please spread the word and let individuals know that there will be a clothing giveaway here at the church from 9 to 1 on Saturday, April the 27th. Upcoming events on May 5th, we will be having our Mother's Day brunch here at the church from 11 a.m. until 1. Children under 13, $10. Adults is $20. Please remember registration and payment is due no later, excuse me, no later than April the 25th. The Mother's Day brunch is May 5th. The last day for registration is April the 25th. Also, market calendars, ladies, we will be going, we will have a bus trip to Branson for the play Queen Esther, and this will be on Saturday, July the 20th. And you can see our sister Valerie for more information. So let's gather ourselves, ladies, and go on the trip to Brinson to see the play Queen Esther. Be blessed. Amen for that. We're going to get right into this. If, and we're, going to, we're going to take offering at the end. Is anybody ready for his word? I have a few slides. We're into Matthew, uh, Romans chapter 5. Hallelujah. I am so thankful for what God is doing and what he's done already. You can go to that first slide. Um, this sermon is entitled Innocent. Look at somebody say innocent. By faith in the blood of Jesus. Somebody say by faith in his blood. Okay, so we have been covering Romans and Romans is the story of the gospel. It's the story of the gospel. And something that's very important for us to remember of what, what has been covered because we're going into Romans chapter 5. I do want to make sure that we understand what has already been laid out. Go to the next slide, please. The next slide, what's been laid out in the first four chapters is universal sin. Universal. Y'all know what universal means? Everybody. So Apostle Paul laid out for the first three chapters in Romans that all have done what? Sinned. This is important to the gospel message. If we dismiss sin, then we devalue the blood. This is why when we fail to take sin seriously, then we can't take his blood seriously because his blood was shed for the sins of the world. So if we don't understand that sin is the whole purpose for the gospel. Matthew 1 and 21 says, Emmanuel, God is with us, and he comes to take away the sins of the world. Well, how did he do that? Through his blood. Amen? So we have to understand sin is universal. He pointed out the non-Gentiles, then, then he pointed out the Gentiles first, and then he pointed out the Jews. And so we have to understand, universal sin, every human, I don't care what family, what culture, what religion, Sin is universal. Amen? How many know you, I, I, got, how many, I don't know if you got little kids. If you got kids, you had little kids at one time. How many realized you didn't, teach, you didn't have to teach them how to sin? David said, in sin did my mother conceive me. It's universal. It's a problem. How many know and God knows it? We're created in his image and his likeness, but in our human nature, we're going to talk about the first Adam. In our human nature, we are sinful by nature. It was a group back in the old group back in the 90s, naughty by nature. Well, guess what? 
We were all, we're all by human standards, we're all naughty by nature. Not because I hate you. I'm sorry, I had to get that, otherwise it was going to fest in my mind all day. Number two is salvation by faith, not works. Amen? By faith, not by works. So I don't care how hard you work to be saved, how hard you work to follow, to do right, how hard you work, salvation does not come by your works. Lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2 and 8. It is a gift of God. Amen? We are saved by what? Grace. Through what? Faith. By grace through faith. Amen? By grace through faith. So, go to the next slide, please. So, remember the foundation of your salvation, y'all. The faith that you, when we say, oh, I'm just stepping out on faith. Oh, I'm, you know, we've all said it at some point. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm stepping out on faith. We have to remember the foundation of your faith is your salvation. We have to remember that, saints, because we'll get saved and then we'll start doing stuff in faith, forgetting that the foundation of our faith is salvation. Salvation from what? The penalty of sin. So we'll get saved and then realizing I had to, how many know in order to be saved, you got to confess your sins? You have to confess your sins. The Bible says God is free. He's faithful. First John 1 and 9 says God is faithful and just that when we confess our sins, he will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's 1 John 1 and 9. Ask me how I know it so well. Because we sin. I sin. But we have to confess it. And that is how we got saved. We have to confess our sins, profess Christ, believe that Jesus Christ died for our sins and rose from the grave. He didn't just die. He rose up. Amen. And so now that is the foundation of our faith. So when we're looking at Romans, we're looking at faith in two, two views. One is saving faith. That's the faith that got you saved. That's the foundation of your working faith. The second stage of faith is working faith. So now that you have saving faith, you got faith to be saved, faith in the blood of Christ, now you have working faith. So everything that you do in faith, it's working with the foundation of your salvation. So what you don't get to do is start walking in faith and saying you're walking with God and then you can't even forgive people for sinning. How you get in? How did I get in? So this is why the message, the whole book of Romans is the message of the gospel. That's why Apostle Paul, he started the first three chapters telling you that yes you're included in the universal sin you and I are all included amen go to the next slide so look at it says I'm going to read it it says this is this is now I'm going back this is uh, uh, two this is two this is actually one this is one in, no go back to the last slide I'm sorry, this is 128. These are the last four scriptures in Romans 1. Go to the, okay, go forward. Let's read this just because everything you read in five is built off these first four chapters. And we love to just cherry pick scriptures. We love it, but we can't do that in this. When we're talking about the gospel, if, do we understand that your armor, a major part of your armor is prepared to preach the gospel everywhere you go? So if you don't understand the gospel, you ain't prepared no matter where you go. The gospel is the message of salvation. How did I get saved? So look at 20, look at 1 and 28. Romans 1 and 28. Romans 1. It says, when they refused to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their evil minds and let them do things they should never be done. Go to the next one. We're going to go to 32. Their lives became full of every greed, every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, fighting, deception, malicious behavior, and oh, 
See, we act like because somebody else did something that you didn't do that we ain't all grouped in together. Look at somebody say, we're in this together. Yeah, I, am. I might have not, have, I might have not have, uh, uh, ever shot and killed somebody and, and committed murder, but how many know I didn't sin? They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful, and forever inventing new ways of sinning and are disobedient to their parents. How many ever disobeyed your mom and daddy? Or granny. Look, I see people say. <laughs> Universal. Saints got to remember this. Because we get saved and we think we ain't never going to sin again. We get saved and forgot we did sin. If you forget this, I'm telling you, if you, this is the foundation of salvation. It's, yeah, you sin. If you don't understand you sin, then you don't even need the Savior. So if you're going to be dismissive of sin, you're going to be dismissive of the Savior who came to die for our sins. Look at somebody say, never devalue the blood of Christ. They refuse to understand. They break their promises. They are heartless and uh oh. Ouch. The scriptures are, how many know the word is the word? They are fully aware of God's death penalty for those who do these things. Do y'all see what we deserve? Now, next week, we're going to go into Romans 6 where it says the wages of sin is what? That's what we deserved. This is in review because we're going, to, we're going in faith. It's exciting. But don't leave the foundation. It's what you're standing on. So I'll, I'll, I'll never discredit or devalue my mom or my father because what I'm standing on is on the foundation that they set for me. I, me and my son Trace was doing yard work to 1030 last night. We was breaking up the ground, putting seed and fertilizer in and putting hay on top because I'm like, I'm, I don't want to deal with this. So we cut the grass. We was outside for a long time. And I was just thinking, I started thanking God. I said, Lord, I thank you for my mom and my dad that raised me in church. I thank God for that. See, we, we think that's a small thing. I'm like, I didn't even know what the mother, I wasn't saved. I wasn't saved until, I wasn't saved until a little later. <laughs> but I used to hear the people saying stuff and, and I would hear and I would see their devotion. I would see their commitment. And I'm like, I thank God for that. Because now that I have my own relationship with the Lord, now I'm in that fight. Now I'm one of those soldiers. I used to grow up hearing that soldier. I'm a soldier. And you know, all these different things. And now I'm here. I thank God for that foundation. Fully aware of the death penalty for those who do these things. Yet they do, right? They go right ahead and do them anyway. This is us, y'all. This is us. You knew what you, you we, we knew. Man, I shouldn't go over here. I know I shouldn't go over to this chick's house tonight. But why am I already en route? <laughs> oh, yeah. See, I like telling on myself because you can, you can see yourself. We talking about, you know, y'all, we know, we know this ain't right. But we still doing it. That's your sin nature. That's your human nature. He says, you knew. See, sometimes we don't know, but how many know? Most of the times we do know. We know it's sin and we still do it anyway. We know we're supposed to forgive people. We don't forgive them anyway. We know it's wrong to gossip. We do it anyway. We know it's wrong to lie to our parents. We do it anyway because we got a problem. If you don't understand you got a problem, then the solution may not mean much to you. Look at what he says, and yet they do it right ahead and do it anyway, yet worse, and encourage others to do them, too. My God. How many have ever been in that seat? Man, you better go get that, bro. That's 
just sin. I used to, you do it. Amen. Go get that. She wants you. Sin. Getting other people to sin. Breaking the heart of God. Thank God for his grace. Somebody say in his mercy. Grace is receiving what you don't deserve. Mercy is, get, grace is getting, getting, grace, mercy is getting, is God forsaking what you do deserve. How many know mercy is God withholds what you do deserve? Thank God for his grace and mercy. Now go to the next scripture, 2 and 1, Romans 2 and 1, and then we're going to move forward. Now look at this. This continues. When you read the Romans, every, the last few scriptures in the one chapter that leads to the next, it's important because that's why you'll see Therefore, you'll see those words. So we, we can't just read one chapter. You, it's going to force you, if you're really going to take some scholarship into the scriptures, it's going to force you to go back. But it says, you may be saying, <clears throat> what a terrible, what terrible people you've been talking about. But look at, look at what Paul says. But you are just as bad and you have no excuse. When you say they are wicked and they should be punished, you are condemning who? Don't lose your foundation when you're walking this thing out. Because I'm going to tell you, the devil, I've, been read, I, I'm, I've just finished reading the first seven books of the Bible, just in my personal time. And it just blows my mind how as soon as the nation of God's people, they would, they would start serving other gods and idol gods and start worshiping other guys and, and even sacrificing their own children, doing all these crazy stuff. And then God would allow the, un, the wicked people to start advancing on God's people just to bring them back to him. So they would cry out. And eventually every time... It's just like clockwork. After things get so hard and the enemy, you start losing stuff, then it drops them to their knees and say, Lord, we're your people. We're sorry. We repent. We'll do everything you say. And then God said, okay. God always accepted them. Always accepting us. Why? Because God is love. Even in the Old Testament, he's love. All right. So <clears throat> let's go to the next slide. Let's go to slide Number, uh, let's go to slide number six, please. Because I want us to read this real quick. And this is a quick review from last week. Because where we're going, you can't lose the foundation. You can't lose the foundation. Go, go to, um, I'm going to just read what's underlined. I'm going to read it to you. It's, it's Romans 4, 2 through 5. It says, if his good deeds had made us acceptable to God, uh, if, if his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. So it wasn't our good deeds. It's not your good deeds that make you acceptable to God. Amen? It's not your good deeds. And, and this is the trap. When we do good, we feel acceptable to God. Right? That's just our nature. But if that's, the way, if that's what it takes for you to be accepted, it's a trap, right? Because you ain't going to always do good deeds. So if good deeds is what makes you acceptable to God, then what about the rest of the time? So no, it's not good deeds that make you acceptable to God. The scripture says, otherwise you would be able to boast. This is Romans 4 and then 3. 3 says, but that was not God's way. For the scriptures tell us, Abraham believed God. Hallelujah. Woo. You ought to show be feeling that after this service already. Just believe. Abraham believed God. Did Abraham make some, did he sin? Did he sin? Did he make mistakes? Yes. But he did what? He believed God. And, and God, not people. See, don't be waiting for people to call you righteous. Because people will still hold your past against you. They'll still be calling you a sinner from stuff you did 10 years ago. Just because they ain't been healed. But how many know, if you believe God, the scriptures say that God counted him righteous. Move on. Because of his what? Faith. You can't trip off people holding you, holding stuff against you. 
You got to move forward. You got to repent. Now, if you owe somebody an apology, you better apologize. If you owe somebody to ask them to forget, you need to do it. That's scripture. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something that they have earned, something that they have earned, something that they have earned. I done worked hard for this. You done worked real hard to lose it too, didn't we? But people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives who? Hold up. You're made righteous when you have faith in God who forgives who? Then who should you forgive? That's foundational. It's foundational. Go to the next slide. Then it's going, we're going to 24, 25. And when God counted him as righteous, talking about Abraham, it wasn't just Abraham's benefit. It was recorded for our benefit too, assuring us that God will also count us as righteous if we believe. This is too good to be true. It really is. That's why, the, that's why it's called good news. It's too good to be true if we just believe. If we just believe God in his sight, he sees us righteous. We're acceptable in his sight. The one who raised Jesus, our, Jesus Christ, our Lord, from the dead, he was handed over to die because of our sins. He was raised to life to make us right with God. Hallelujah. Thank God for his word. Now, let's go to Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Now, we're in Romans, so don't lose Romans, don't lose Romans 4 because Romans 5 is built off 4, 3, 2, and 1. So, remember... No self-righteousness because sin is universal. Boom. Now there's been a way to make right without the law. Okay, without the law? We, we messed up with the law. Okay, boom. Now let's go in Abraham's faith. Faith, faith, faith. Did he sin? Yeah, he made some mistakes. But his faith, he believed God. He believed God. Abraham believed God. So guess what you need to do? All you got to do is believe. So now Romans 5 and 1. Now it comes right out of the gate. Romans 5 and 1 comes right out of the gate. Right out of the gate. There we go, Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight. Actually, can we get this King James? I'm sorry. Can we get this into King James? I love New Living Translation, but New Living Translation has already translated the original text, which is great, but sometimes we lose a few words you have to know when you understand the gospel. In order to understand the gospel, there's a few words you have to know and have to understand. And there it is in the first scripture. Therefore being what? Justified. You have to know that word. If you want to understand the gospel, you want to understand how to share the gospel, you want to understand how to be saved yourself, you need to understand this word justified. The word justified, it means rendered innocent. You are rendered innocent. By faith. So when you're trying to beat yourself up and condemn yourself, you got to realize it is by faith that you're rendered innocent. And because justification brings us to peace with God. Hallelujah. How many know having peace with people is a commandment also? It's a scripture that we ought to, live, we ought to seek to live with peace, to live in peace with everybody. It's, it's us. We're going to read about that in Romans 2. It says, the whole story of the gospel is in there. We ought to be seeking to live at peace with everybody. That's what, but how many know peace with God is more important than anything else? Because if you got peace with God, God will make peace even with, the scriptures, even with your enemies. Even with your enemies will try to make peace with you. We have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So understand, when you are justified, you're doing it by faith. You're innocent by faith. In the blood. And when you're innocent, when you're justified, you have peace with God. Ah, go to that next slide, please. Understand this. Peace with God. We're going to come back to that. Yes, go to the next slide, please. Peace with God. Justification causes us to have peace with God. You got your own personal peace. Mm. Go to the next slide, please. You need to understand this word. It's justification. It's the Greek word decay, and it means to be rendered, to render just or innocent, freely justified, freely. It's free. You can't work for it. You can't pay enough. You can't pay enough for it. Hallelujah. 
You can't pay enough for it. Now let's go. Let's go. To, let's go to uh, back to back to uh, Romans chapter five, and then we're going to we're gonna we're gonna go quickly. We're gonna go very quickly. Go to Romans two, Romans five and two. By whom we also have access, Hallelujah, by faith into this grace wherein we stand. Oh my God. So my question to you is, what are you standing in? What are you standing in? What are you standing in? It says we have access by faith. You see, all this is by faith. That's why for the fourth chapter, it, rep- it brings in faith. It brings in faith into the picture. And now we are understanding that we have to understand that access brings you into a place where you stand in grace. Are you standing in grace? How I many know grace is free? Freely you have received, so you have to freely what? Freely give. Go to the next one. Rejoice in the hope. Uh, Not only so, but we glory in tribulations. So this is powerful. We glory. Earlier, we were, we, you could feel the glory. How many know when you're going through things and you're trusting God and you have that, that's sh- you're sharing the glory. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to have you go back, I don't think, but go back to New Living Translation. I wanted you to, that word, the word justification, I needed you to see that word. But now let's go back to New Living Translation. We have to understand that now we, we share in God's glory. Remember in the Old Testament where God says, I will never share my glory with another? But now look at what the scripture say. The scripture says we can rejoice too when we run into problems. Rejoice when you run into problems? I don't rejoice when I run into problems. And you'll see when you read the scriptures, the book of James is really so parallel to the book of Romans. Where he says, count it all joy when you encounter and you go through divers' trials. And then he starts talking about patience, don't he? Well, the same thing here. We can rejoice when we run into problems and trials. For, how many know this is all by faith? Look at somebody say this is all by faith. So when you go through trials, by faith, you ought to be rejoicing knowing that you trust in God. I have a hope that's beyond what I can see. I got a hope that's beyond what I can feel. I got a hope that's beyond this present situation. I have a hope that's beyond what's attacking my house, my marriage, my kids. I have a hope. Look at somebody and say, I have a hope. Problems and trials, we know that they are good for us. My God. Your trials are good for you. They help us learn how to have endurance. How many know endurance is powerful? It's a, it's a powerful thing. Anytime I see somebody that's been at the same thing and committed to something, I learn a whole lot about them without even ever speaking to them. Because everybody want to hop around. Oh, it's quiet. If something is hard, if something is hard, our natural thing is to want to jump from it. Go to, from point A to point B. I want to go to the next. I ain't, I ain't sign up for this. But the scripture says it's good for you because you learn how to endure. The root word to endure is end. You got a vision of the end for the joy that was set before him. Christ endured the cross. He endured everything, every pain, every trial because he saw the end. Endure. Look at the next one. And if you have endurance, look what endurance does. When you have endurance, endurance develops the strength of your character. Oh, my goodness. Trials are good for you because it helps you develop endurance, and then endurance helps you develop strength of character. And character strength is our confident expectation of salvation. Uh Uh-oh. Hold up. I thought we was already saved. King James says the hope of our salvation. This lets us know that when, that's why I said you have to remember the foundation of your salvation. You start walking with the Lord, that's the foundation. There's an expectation. Even after I'm saved, there's still a hope. If you don't have the hope of salvation, don't you know when you go through trials, if you forget your hope of your salvation, then you're going to lose your hope. 
It strengthens our character. And when you have character strengthened, isn't it something your confident level goes up? Isn't it something when you, when you endure stuff, you get confident and your confidence in God? It's, it's just like this. You endure something. You thought you weren't going to make it. Hallelujah. And then God brought you out of that thing. And now the devil tried to attack you with the same thing. And now you got confidence that you're going to make it. Because he, got, he did it last time, didn't he? See, it strengthens your confidence and your expectation of salvation. Keep going. Go to five. Now look at this. And the expectation will not disappoint you. Hallelujah. Some people are going to say, I don't know why you keep on trusting. I don't know why you keep on believing. How many know the scripture says your expectation will not disappoint you? For we know how God dearly loves us because he has given us what? He's given us what? Why did he give you the Holy Spirit? Say that a little louder, please. What is your heart filled with? We love the Holy Ghost. So come a shy, he coming in the Honda. But what is your heart filled with? See, we learned last year that the fruit, the fruit of the Spirit is love. We learned that last week, last year, didn't we? And here it is. It's echoed again that when you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit fills your heart with love. How many understand there are four types of love in the Greek? How many know they ain't talking about none of them other three? It's talking about agape. The Holy Spirit fills your heart with agape love. That is God's kind of love that is unconditional. That is God's kind of love that says as far as your, the east is from the west. He says, I throw your sins into the sea of what? But we say, we say stuff like, I forgive, but I'll never forget. Well, that's not God's kind of love. Because God's love takes, he forgives, and then he throws my sins. Mine. I ain't talking about you, I'm talking about me. He throws my sins into the sea of forgetfulness. See, this is the message of the gospel, y'all. So if you can't forgive people, you don't, you don't got the gospel rolling, run, running in you. And I'm going to tell you, you're looking at somebody who I, I, had to, I had to war. God had to do some strange things to me in order for me to let go of forgiveness, to let it loose. So you ain't looking, you ain't looking, for, you ain't looking at nobody who ain't battle-tested with this. We think we can be saved and not forgive people. You know what that does? You know what, you know what the Bible says in 1 John? It says, he who says he has no sin makes God to be a liar. And the truth is not in him. That's the Bible. That ain't what I'm saying. It's what he said. He says, and Jesus himself said, how can you forgive how can you not forgive your brother? If you can't forgive your brother, my father in heaven. What? God can't do something? He said, if you can't forgive your brother, my father in heaven cannot forgive you. Apostle John said, he says, nobody's ever seen God. This is how you know they're of God, is if they love one another. He says, how can you hate your brother whom you see every day, but say you love a God you ain't never seen? The hope of salvation. Sin is universal. Lord, we repent. For holding people's sin against them. When you let mine go. Go to six. If your heart. If, the Holy, if you have the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit fills your heart with love. So I've had moments where certain things happen. And I'm like. I'm not letting it go till I handle this. 
the way I see fit to handle this. That's that living in my truth stuff. Oh, I got to follow my truth. Uh-huh. And, and God will let you, he'll let you, he'll let you on that path if you want to be. And I was on that path. I've been on that path before. You know what that path is? Go to, go, can you go to James chapter 3? Let me show you something. Let me show you all something. Can we let the Holy Spirit move in here? Let me show you what you don't want to flirt with. James 3, go to, go to verse 15, please. It says, jealousy, self, go to 14, I'm sorry, go to the previous one. Now watch this, I want because I want to capture this whole thing. But if you are bitterly jealous, unforgive, this is in, in the King James talks about, can we go to King James? I'm sorry, I told you I, told you I might not, but I, I, I put that might in there because I ain't want to lie on a Sunday. On a Sunday. For if ye have, look at this, if ye have bitter, envying, and strife in your what? Hearts, glory not, and lie not against her. Huh? Uh-oh. How many say the truth? It don't say a truth. It's the truth. The truth is talking about God's truth. It ain't got nothing to do with me and your truth. So when I was saying, I, I, I got to handle this the way I know how to handle this. What I didn't know was there was a root of bitterness rooting up in my heart. The scripture says, above all, guard your heart because out of your heart flow the issues of life. So now I got something growing up in my heart trying to control the, courses, the course of my life. And this is what we flirt with when we don't forgive. There's bitterness root, rooting. It's starting to root. Now look at 15. It says, this wisdom descended not from above, but it is earthly, sensual, and what? The word is the word. And when we got that in our, it feels like wisdom, but it ain't wisdom from God. God ain't the only one with wisdom. Because we can make it make sense, won't he? We can make that thing make sense. Because I sure had it make sense. I've been in times where it took my whole inner circle to to stop me. And then eventually, God said, all right, go ahead. Do what you want to do. See what it's going to cost you. And when I saw that, oh, my God, you better have a circle. You better have a circle. This thing ain't easy. You better have a circle. You can't do it by yourself. You better have a circle. 1 a.m., my brothers was on the phone talking to me, praying for me. In the middle of the night, mm-hmm. fighting for righteousness, fighting for me not to let a situation cause me to lose everything. And I still felt justified to do what I, what I had in my mind to do. That root is strong and it's wisdom, but it's not heavenly wisdom. You need a circle. The Bible says one could chase a thousand, two could put ten thousand to flight. Even, even Solomon, even Solomon said, look, two is better than one. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. We be finding people to agree with our sin. We be trying to find people to agree with our unforgiveness. We be trying to find people that's got the same grievance. You need to find some people that's going to stand for righteousness. You need to find some people that's going to hold you to God's word. I thank God for the people in my life. And I, we were talking about, Elder Wayne was teaching a couple, of, a couple of weeks ago in Wednesday night, small groups. And he says, he says is, is your convictions, can your convictions be somebody else's condemnation? And I said, ooh, that's a good question. I said, that's a great question. Then I started thinking, no, yeah, and, and we're going to talk about it here in Romans in a little bit. Not today, I'm talking about further chapters alone. But it starts talking about your convictions. And see, you, you have to follow, you have to take heed. When you're walking by the Spirit, the, the Holy Spirit moves you through convictions. Not condemnation, convictions. And what I've learned was, and I told the class, I said, what happens is the people you surround yourself with are the people you share their same convictions. It's not about 
you being better than anybody. But when you have convictions, your convictions literally choose your circle for you. It chooses the people you need to be around. And I told the class, I said, because of my convictions and because the circle that I have, my convictions chose my circle. And I said, because of that circle, it's real hard for any one of my brothers to cheat on our wives. Let me show you how this salvation walk works. That's how it works. You need to be around people that's going, that, that your convictions, because just as easy on the flip side, conversely, if you got people that love to cheat on their wife, you're around them, guess what you're going to do? It don't mean you're better than them. It's just, evil. what does it say? 1 Corinthians 15 and 33, evil communications corrupts your good manners. Manners is something you work for. You don't just get manners. You work for them. They, they build on you. And it says if you just surround yourself with the wrong circle, all that good is destroyed. Corrupted, corroded. Stop trying to be so strong like you can, as long as I got King Jesus, long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. The most non-scriptural popular gospel song ever in the history of It's We're in the body. Every joint, Ephesians 4 says, supplies so when I'm feeling really down and low, there's a joint I'm connected with. And the strength of him supplies the weakness and builds me up. This is how this salvation work works. This is what this is about. If you're not convicted to be righteous, Not to never make a mistake. You got to have a circle that's going to hold you to God's word. Saving your family. Saving. I got brothers. I told my wife this was early in our marriage because I spent time with my brothers. And we was on a FaceTime thing. We do a little FaceTime thing. We come together. And, and she knows it. But I had to tell on the, on the beginning of our marriage, I said, the strength, I said, the greatest advocate to our marriage is God and my circle. The circle that God put me with. If you don't think God is going to put you around godly people, have you read the Bible? Always. Always. Moses had Aaron. Paul had Barnabas. Silas. Come on, Aquila and Priscilla. You're going to see people come together. Jesus even did. Come on. Jesus was God. And he surrounded himself. Pray with me. Come on, God in the flesh. Asking people to pray for him in this time of weakness. Pray for me. Stand and pray with me. for. And we don't even want to tell nobody nothing. We want to go on Facebook. Ain't nobody going to pray for you. They finna gossip about you. Ooh, child. Sister Lucy going through, ain't she? What? Oh, you ain't see? All because we're not doing what the scriptures clearly easily tell us to do. It says call for elders when you're sick. It says confess your faults one to another so that you may be healed. Come on. That's how healing comes. Go to 16. Watch this. Don't follow this wisdom. For there, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But how do you know it's wisdom from above or wisdom from below? I'm glad you asked. Go to 17. This ain't in my notes, but we need this today. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Pure. If somebody gives you wisdom, you know in old school, hey boy, let me see you. I'm going to show you how to, keep that, how to keep that woman. I'm going to show you how to keep it. That's wisdom, but is that from above? Is it pure? Then it is what? Peace. It's gentle. 
easy to be entreated. Full of what? Full of mercy. Remember what mercy is, y'all? Mercy is you do deserve it, but I revoke what you deserve. God's wisdom is full of mercy. Easy to be entreated. And look at this, full of good what? Fruits. Without partiality. Oh, gosh. Are y'all, lo- are y'all watching this? Do y'all know what partiality is? Do we know what partiality is? God's wisdom is not partial. God's wisdom is no respect of persons. His truth is his truth. Without hypocrisy. Thank you, Jesus. Stand to your feet. God moved in this place. I don't have time to get through Romans 5. And I'm telling you, I studied for probably 20 hours. And I'm not exaggerating at all. But how many know God is faithful? He knows what we need. And I'm thankful that God has moved in us. How many had your own altar call already in this service? Woo, God. Mm. Ah, yes. Did some stuff die today? That's what happens. Altars alter you because things die. Things die at the altar. And if something dies at the altar, then other things have room to live. Death brings life. So it's at the altar where we die and we kill things. Things that are not like God. Things that are not favorable. And then that death gives life to what God wants. Mm. So I'm going to ask our leaders to come. We're going to do offering at the end of, of service. I want to. How many received the word today? How many got helped by the word today? There's so much in Romans 5. It's so much. We didn't even barely scratch the surface. Hallelujah. And this is a very important part of the service is Holy Communion. Holy Communion. Holy Communion. Commune. It's us understanding that his blood, his blood was shed. It was my blood that was supposed to be shed. It was your blood that was supposed to be shed. But Jesus Christ shed his blood for our sins. And without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. This is the gospel. This is the good news. Last week we talked about that word propitiation. That was, he was the atoning lamb. He was the lamb who atoned for you and I. He stood in our place where we belonged and he stood in that place. And he took the death that belonged to us because of the wages of our sin. And while we're doing communion, we're not doing this religiously, saints. We're doing this through relationship. Understanding that he took my death. His blood was shed. I was watching something and somebody was talking about people, they were making fun of Christians. And smart person, smart guy. And he was like, Christians, it's crazy. You know, they believe a God. Talk about putting blood on the door. Like God don't know who already in there. God, if you don't believe God know who's in there, 
then why you got to put blood on the door so he can pass, so you can bypass you for death? And, and, and I just put in the comments, I said, it's because he don't understand that moment in history was a symbol of Christ's blood. Where death passed over because of the blood of Christ. And his blood, when we take and drink his blood, it's us understanding, Lord, it's not my goodness. It's not me being so good. It's because of your blood that death passed over me. And I said, people that don't know, they just don't know. This was a symbol of Jesus Christ. God knew exactly who was in there, yes. But he can't make you believe in his son it takes faith so the fact that we're doing this we do it every first Sunday don't get caught up in thinking it's religious it's just a traditional thing we do no no this is intentional this is relational he really did die for my sins and I honor him by drinking the blood like he told us to we drink this little cup of grape juice, but the symbol is the blood that was shed, the lamb that was slain. This is why if you have not given your life to Christ, if you, not, if you have not made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, taking communion is out of order for where you need to be. It doesn't mean that you can't be saved. How many know communion is sacred? It's sacred. It's a sacred ceremony. Because we're taking it into our bodies. That means Jesus Christ is already living in me. He's already my, not just Savior, but Lord. Flawed? Absolutely we are. But we know we're hid in Christ. His body was broken for us. So God, I pray over the body. Mm. And the blood. Lord, bless it. I ask, Lord, that you bless the body that was broken for us. Bless the wine representing your blood and your spirit. That comes and dwells inside of us. Bless all those. Who partake in this ceremony. Hallelujah. We thank you for the good news. And we thank you. For this bread and this wine. And we thank you Lord. We believe that you have blessed it. In Jesus name. Ministers, elders, at the Last Supper, Jesus was with his disciples, his closest disciples, and he told them, you have to eat my body that was broken for you. Take and eat my flesh. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. Then we understand without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Jesus Christ did not trust in the blood of bulls and goats, but his own blood. He was the prepared lamb. Y'all realize he was the Passover lamb. He was it. That's why he told them, take and eat my flesh. And now take and drink my blood for the remission of sins. Take and drink in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, my God. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. We thank God for Mama Linda in the house. Can we get in our places so we can serve, so we can serve the people?
get in position to serve the people of God. If we can get everybody to, to walk so nobody has to walk over you in the row, do we have the sequence down? We follow, follow the, the minister's lead here. We're going through each section's middle aisle. We're ready at their direction. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When you get to your seats, would you please go ahead and get the bread in your hand? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Get the bread in your hand. And would you please hold it up so I know we're ready to corporately take it? When you're done, we'll wait for those of you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. At the Last Supper, Jesus, he told them, take and eat of my flesh that was broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, the blood, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Take and drink the blood in remembrance of me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we give God some glory for the blood and the body? The body and the blood. We didn't even get through the scriptures, but the scriptures tell us that we're we're made innocent through the blood that we just took. That's, a, that's good news, ain't it? Ain't that good news? Hallelujah. Now let's prepare our hearts for prepare, prepare our hearts for giving. Uh, if you need an envelope, would you just lift your hand up? And we're getting ready to make our declarations. We are so um, just, you know, we're excited to give. Giving is a, is a, we get to do it. It's a privilege. Amen? It's a privilege to give. I, I'm, you know, I'm reading, reading through the Old Testament, it just blesses me how every opportunity that God's people, the leaders, Abraham and Moses, Aaron, when they, 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 Joshua, when they came across and God blessed them to do, they would set up memorials and they would give and they would always remember the Lord. Hallelujah. So, Let's make our declarations. Uh, raise your hand again if you need an envelope, please. If you need an envelope, our giving, we need an envelope over here, over here on this side. We're going to make our declarations. Hallelujah. All right, let's stand and make our confessions. We're going to make our declarations that we do. Somebody say, when I give.
Thank you, Lord. Elder Ted, come on up here, actually, if you can. Are you helping? He helping. He helping people. He helping people, ain't he? <laughs> Say amen for Elder Ted. Amen. Hey, man. Let's give Pastor a hand for that word, saints. Isn't it good to know that you can live free in Christ? You don't have to have all the bondage of unforgiveness, judging, and just, just sin, the bondage of sin. We've been justified. And I just want to thank God for that again. Let's give God a hand as we go right into offering. Amen. All right, let's make our declarations. When I give, it is given back unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men give unto me. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. Lord, you promise to give seed to the sower. I declare that I am a sower. You will multiply my seed song and my fruits of righteousness. I am the seed of Abraham. You richly bless me. You make my name great. You bless those who bless me. And you curse those who curse me. You make us a great nation, and we shall be a blessing. These hands are diligent hands that produce kingdom wealth in order to establish God's covenant in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. You should give. Give yourselves a round of applause. You sound so wonderful. <laughs> You sound excited to give. God loves a cheerful giver, saints. Amen. Amen. So now we're getting ready to close the service. Hope everybody have a blessed week. I hope you I, I hope you leave out better than you came in. After hearing a word like that, you should be real light. You should feel free. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for blessing us to come together today. And Lord God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, I pray that you continue to watch and protect us. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. You all have a blessed week, saints.